The title for today is Wise Gifts. Sort of a bit of a play on words, wise men, wise gifts. Don't worry too much about the title, because we might go, but we're basically thinking about gifts. And we're doing things differently at St. Bride's, because we always do. We're celebrating Epiphany a week late, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, last week, Martin, as mentioned, started off us thinking about the whole topic of gifts and giving. And you responded in a wonderful way in talking about how, why you give gifts. And there's going to be a chance for a response in this, but it's your silent response. We're going to end up with uh, a bit of meditation and a chance for you to reflect on what gifts you have and what gifts can you bring. Epiphany. We talk about it a lot. What does it mean? Well, John, in the wonderful liturgy you've put together, um, the back of the morning prayer, there isn't room for it on your Holy Communion sheets today, but he put this quote, the disclosure of Christ as the direct manifestation of the divine to human consciousness and vocation. Or to put it slightly easier, <laughs> simpler from the Cambridge Dictionary, uh, a moment when you suddenly feel that you understand or suddenly become conscious of something that is very important to you. So stick with that, Tiffany thought. Now, the passage we heard, it's very familiar, that passage of the journey of the Magi from Matthew's Gospel. And many of you here will know, but uh, that passage is only found, that story is only found in Matthew. Often, the birth stories from Luke and Matthew become muddled together. Nativity plays, carols, they, they weave a different story, and they're not always accurate. But a few things that point, point out from Matthew. He doesn't call the people kings, but magi, wise men, people with a more than earthly wisdom. Neither does he give a precise number, apart from mentioning three gifts. Again, we've been influenced by local tradition. And I want to suggest this morning that the wise men's story contains elements of pilgrimage. Those of us who've been on pilgrimages with St. Bride's or independently will have experienced, hopefully, a transformative journey that takes us from one mode of being into another, from the mundane to the spiritual. And that's a quote from a book called The Pilgrim Journey. So how was it a pilgrimage for the Magi? And who were they and where were they from? Some say that they are identified with a cast of Zoroastrian astrologers and philosophers known to be active in Persia from the 6th century BCE. The term Magi comes from the Greek Magos, which was derived from the Persian term for the philosopher astrologer Greece. So they were from Persia then. But Others suggest that they would have come from ancient Shiva because of the nature of the gifts they carried. Now their journey, the major journey involved long distance travel from present day Iran or present day Yemen. Um, they would have had to cross mountains and deserts to reach Bethlehem. A transformative journey through beautiful or inspiring landscape, as well as wild, remote and dangerous terrain. <coughs> and I thank Fazana and Hamid for helping me see that. Uh, you may recall before Christmas when we shared their story and hearing their story of their journey. And it was a year ago, at this time a year ago, they were still on their journey. 
They started off on the 10th of January and they arrived in Liverpool on the 22nd. And uh, hearing your stories helped me to see more of the sort of terrain and the, the, uh, the journey that these major had to go through. Maybe the Magi had clear skies at night time. Well, we hope we do, because they were supposed to be following a star. But actually, the Gospel tells us the star was there to begin with, and then later on, could have been cloudy night. <laughs> so they had a long distance travel. They were also eager to experience and honour a source of sacred awe. I think their journey was intended to be a transformative one. They experienced the epiphany of the incarnate Christ. And this, uh, I'm not going to read it all now, but uh, those of you familiar with the, the poem, The Journey of the Magi by T.S. Eliot, that, uh, that speaks more of that. Um, so they came a long way, long distance travel, and they were coming to honour a source of sacred awe. The Magi also paid rev due reverence by leaving behind symbolic gifts, gold, incense and myrrh. Now 2,000 years ago, frankincense and myrrh were as valuable as gold. So some suggest that the three gifts of the Magi give us a better clue where they were from. Ancient Sheba, as I've already mentioned, modern day Yemen. So the three, I find this really interesting. Um, the fact that Sheba is a bit nearer to the gold mines across the, um, you know, the other side of the peninsula in Africa, the gold mines of Africa. And the two trees from which we get frankincense and myrrh, uh, the frankincense comes from the Boswellia sacra tree, and it's native only to the Arabian Peninsula and Somalia. And the Comifora tree from which we get myrrh, again, is only grows in the Arabian Peninsula. The kingdom of Sheba in that time grew rich on these three unusual, rare and precious commodities. Gold, frankincense and myrrh. <coughs> Maybe in the story, the gifts were, or the, the, the wise men thought that not only should they carry something that was rich, but diplomatic, bringing something from their own country to leave behind. So maybe they were from Sheba. But does it matter? It's a wonderful story. What's most important, I think, is that they had a transformative journey. They were eager to experience and honour a source of sacred awe. They did pay due reverence to the Christ child when they found him, and they left behind symbolic gifts. For you and the wise men are going to help give them out. So, uh, as soon as you can see it, you will discover what it is. Don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an aid to our reflection, our meditation. have got a, an image of a wise person, not all of them. I didn't have enough old Christmas cards for that. And the back is blank on purpose, because it's for you.
So let us journey with the Magi to a quiet, deep place. Sit back, relax, and journey. The Magi set out on a transformative journey. The star in Matthew's Gospel moves and leads the way to Bethlehem, to the light. God is found in the moments of wonder that make us stop and ponder the mystery. What have been your awakening moments of wonder that have led you deeper into mystery? wise men were eager to experience and honour a source of sacred awe together. We don't know how many of them, but we can imagine the little community that they became as they travelled together, sharing this experience. Where do you experience community? What does this add to your journey? wise men paid due reverence. Falling on their knees, they worshipped the king, a moment beyond intellectual understanding and of recognition. We can imagine that moment of knowing in the deep silence. Do you cultivate silence in your life so that there can be moments of knowing and of recognition? wise men offer their symbolic gifts. To be in the presence demanded a response, an offering of themselves and of their gifts. Identify your own gifts. What are you offering of yourself, your time and your material possessions?
invite you to take these cards home with you to continue your reflections, you reflect on, on your gifts and what gifts you want to bring. Keep the card with you and a reminder of the gifts which you have offered with loving, open hearts. Amen. Um.